Hey guys, welcome to the Becca Cook Show. I'm Becca Cook, and today I want to talk about gender confusion and how it relates to spiritual warfare and how it also relates to Romans chapter 1. And the reason I am even bringing this up about gender confusion is recently a friend of mine kept asking me or urging me to watch this show called Billions. It's a Showtime series and it's on Amazon Prime, so it's available to watch. And I and I was kind of curious about the show. I had heard that there was a quote unquote non-binary actor on the show. So I wanted to kind of investigate what was going on on this show. And so I watched a few episodes and, uh, and, and there's an actor on the show. Her name is Asia Kate Dylan. And, and I went to Wikipedia to see what the deal was with this actor because she, she was born a girl, um, but she looks like a boy on the show and which you'll see this picture of right now. And she looks like a boy. And so I was like, what's going on with this character? Why did they cast this character? What is this character all about? And so just a little background on Asia Kate Dillon. She was born in 1984. She is, uh, she uses the singular they pronouns, which doesn't make sense because they is a plural pronoun. And by the way, I, I'm not here to pile on Asia Kate Dillon. Um, that's not my intent here. My intent, well, first of all, we need to pray for her, but I just want to make that clear from the beginning. I just want to use this as a jumping off point of other issues that are that are underneath this. So she she on billions this Showtime show. She is the first non-binary main character on North American television. So non-binary means she's she doesn't identify as either male nor female. So that's why she goes by the pronoun they, they, there, and them. And it says, I mean, the, the Wikipedia page on her is, is so completely insane. Uh, the, and I'm going to read you a few of the of kind of the description of her in this Wikipedia page. It says they enrolled in a com and completed the Meisner training program at the actor's workshop, et cetera, et cetera. They were the youngest student ever admitted to the class. Now, again, this is talking about one person, but she uses the pronoun they. Um, Dylan played a white supremacist in eight episodes of Orange is the New Black making them one of the first non-binary actors cast in a major television show. So again, the pronouns. Um, and then it says, when submitting their name for an Emmy Award for acting, Dylan was allowed to submit for whichever gendered category they wished and chose actor over actress because it is, gen is it a gender neutral word. So, I mean, this is this sounds like kind of out of a sci-fi movie or sci-fi novel, but it's actually reality. And so this is our reality now. And and then it goes on to say that Queer Tea magazine, which is a gay magazine, obviously, <laughs> Queer Tea named them, meaning her, Queer Tea named them one of Pride 50 trailblazing individuals who actively ensure society remains moving towards equality, acceptance, and dignity for all queer people. And again, it says, and at the very end, it says, they were assigned female at birth. Dylan identifies as pansexual, stating they are attracted to multiple genders. So again, I don't want to pile on this person. I really don't. I really... I want to, we need to pray for what's going on because this is a spiritual battle. We're in a giant spiritual battle. We have been uh, for millennia and 
And Paul, of course, talks about that in uh, Ephesians. Ephesians, he says, in chapter 6, he says, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. So Paul makes it clear in Ephesians, and he has he's, he says something else in Ephesians later, but or before, but Paul is is telling us that we are not wrestling. We're we're not battling just the culture. There's there's spiritual forces behind the culture. They're demonic spiritual. There's a demonic spiritual battle going on, and we're in the midst of it. And as you can see. Satan is blinding so many people, including people in the church. Satan is blinding people and he's, and I always say that Satan is winning when it comes to this issue, when these, these issues like LGBTQ plus issues, Satan is winning this battle right now in culture. Um, Ultimately he's not going to win the war, but right now he's winning. And as Christians, as believers, we have to be aware that there is a spiritual battle going on and that uh, we need to put on the full armor of God. We need to, as Paul says in Ephesians 6, put on the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the sword of the spirit, the belt of truth, uh, the shoes ready for the gospel, to share the gospel. I think, am I missing anything? And so it's important for us to be aware that this this actress, Asia Kate Dillon, didn't just, this didn't just happen out of nothing. This obviously happened because of the crazy culture we live in, but underneath that, there's a spiritual war going on. And, and that's why it's important to, to know that. And also Paul in Ephesians 2, he says, you and you were dead in your trespasses and sins in which you once walked following the course of this world following the prince of the power of the air which is satan and the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience among whom we have all once lived in the passions of our flesh carrying out the desires of the body and the mind and were by nature children of wrath like the rest of mankind What's interesting about Asia Kate Dillon is, you know, I've talked about this before, I think, um, but I, I have been in many pitch meetings in Hollywood and pitch meetings are where you pitch a movie idea or TV show to executives at a network or at a movie studio, et cetera. And I was in, uh, I'll just give you an example. One, one meeting in particular, I was in, it was for, I think it was for an HBO show and the executives, I can't remember what the production company was, but they did a lot of stuff for HBO. And I was in there with my writing partner and we were pitching ideas for, for show TV shows. And they, this is back in the, this was like early two thousands and the one of the producers said we want (laughs) he said we want a show like the sopranos but we want to push the envelope even more so that's always the mandate at these networks especially showtime hbo those kinds and even network shows uh abc 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 nbc cbs etc and all, you know, of course, Netflix and, and Amazon, but that's always the mandate. It's, we want to, it's never okay. It's never good enough to just have a normal show. You, it has to push the envelope. It has to be more extreme than anything that preceded it. And so that's why you see these shows that continue to become more and more extreme. For some reason, that's the mandate at these networks and at these studios. It's they they want to push and push and push to see how far they can go. And I mean, who knows where it's going to end up? But it's 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 not going to get better. And 
and, and it's it's interesting because it's Showtime is actually using this person, this Asia Kate Dillon. Showtime is using her just to push the envelope, really. Uh, there, it's it's so clear the way they use her in the show. It's they're using this actress and using her non-binary status and her trans kind of gendery status to somehow make themselves look like they're progressive and they they are in the know that they there's there's something you know that they know better than than we do and they're just going to keep pushing and pushing and pushing and and I just in, in a way I feel sorry for Kate or Asia Kate Dillon on the show because I'm like you don't even realize that you're just being used by the executives to push their own agenda and and it's very 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 sad and I I remember um I was at a an opera Candide I was at the opera Candide in Los Angeles with my very close friend and we we met we went there and we met um an HBO executive and his hus husband the, and I remember we had this during the intermission we had this conversation and the HBO executive who's done you've there's he's done many 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 shows that you're probably aware of but we were talking about um kind of casting and we were talking about the mandate in Hollywood and the mandate at, at HBO and it was he said something about you know it's not enough to to have a gay director anymore like we it's not enough to have just a female director or a gay director now we have to have a trans director and he's like gay is just old hat like we need something new and and so he was telling us that they were having a hard time finding a trans director who knew how to direct that particular show. Cause that show, the, the trans directors that were out there knew how to direct kind of actiony stuff, but this was not, this was more of a drama and they couldn't find <laughs> a trans director to direct this show or it was difficult to find. So I just found that so fascinating that, that, that there again, there's this mandate in Hollywood that there has to be this extreme diversity. And what's also interesting about this actress on on the show on Billions, Asia Kate Dillon, is there's almost like this kind of mystical Gnosticism surrounding the character. It's like because this character is non non-binary and and I think basically trans. I'm not sure how she would identify as that, but because of that, she is treated, you, the character is treated with such deference as if she has some kind of special knowledge that no one, no other human being has that only this, this very advanced human being who is non-binary has this gift of special knowledge, which is Gnosticism. <laughs> and it comes from the Greek word gnosis, which means no, but, or knowledge. So uh, it's just fascinating because in the show, a lot of the characters often mess up and, and do, you know, get in trouble and do bad things. But this character played by Asia K. Dillon never makes a mistake is always right, always knows more than everyone else in the office, always has the best ideas, is like she went from like an intern to the CEO of the company or whatever, the CIO, whatever that means. And and so it's this, it's this bizarre, it's this bizarre push to normalize the opposite of reality, the opposite of truth. And that's why I wanted to talk about Romans chapter one and about suppressing the truth. Obviously, I've talked about this before in Romans one verse 18. It says, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven 
against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. For what can be known about God is plain to them because God has shown it to them. For his invisible attributes, main, namely his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world in the things that have been made. So they are without excuse. And then it goes on down in verse 26. It says, for this reason, God gave them up to dishonorable passions for their women exchanged natural relations for those that are contrary to nature. And the men likewise gave up natural relations with women and were consumed with passion for one another. Men committing, men committing shameless acts with men and receiving in themselves the due penalty of their error. Now, why does Paul use homosexual behavior as the example of suppressing the truth? So in verse 18, he, or yeah, in verse 18, he talks about suppressing the truth, that all of mankind is suppressing the truth. And he uses the example of homosexual behavior in verse 26 and so on. And the reason he does that, I think, is because it's evident by creation, it's evident that anatomically, physiologically, that men and women belong together. So it's just plain. It's plain to, to see that men don't belong with men and women don't belong with women in a sexual way. And so Paul uses that as there as as human beings suppressing the truth. And it's the same with the with the this gender issue and with gender confusion. It's clear who is a boy and who is a girl. But we as a culture now are where this has become more extreme, I think, than any time in history. Um, I mean, there certainly were trans transsexual people in antiquity, but this, I think it, now it's, it's become a, way bigger than it ever has been. And, and it's, again, this is the idea is we are suppressing the truth because we know clearly that Asia Kate Dillon is a woman. We know that clearly. But we, we treat her as a man, or we treat her as a non-binary person. And we use the pronouns, we, we were required to use the pronouns they, them, and their to describe her. And so again, it's this whole concept of suppressing the truth and we, I mean, this is not this is not the only area in which our culture is suppressing the truth. I mean, we're suppressing the truth in so many, <laughs> so many different areas. It's hard to keep up with it. It's really hard to keep up. And and again, I just I do not want to to condemn Asia Kate Dillon. I want to pray for her, and I, I think we should all pray for her. I want. And it's it's just like I. I get so frustrated because all of my friends who work in the business in Hollywood and are producing this stuff, I just, I pray for them all the time too, because I'm just like, ugh, if they could just, if they just knew the truth, if they knew, if they didn't suppress the truth, if they knew the truth, if God would just reveal the truth to them, they would understand. And then this content would stop being made. So we just have to keep praying for our culture, we have to keep praying for people like Asia Kate Dillon and and not get bogged down in the kind of the assault of it, because we know that God's in control. We know that at the at the at the end of the day, at the end of time, he is going to rectify everything and he's everything is going to be restored He's going to resolve everything. Like it's all going to be resolved, all of these issues that we're dealing with today. And so as much as it's easy to slip into getting super stressed out about what's going on in culture and 
you know, on social media and on Twitter and, and to get super stressed about that. But we always have to remind ourselves that God is in control. God knows what he's doing. And ultimately, everything is going to be made right. And he is going to make it happen. And I can't wait for that day. But in the meantime, as Christians, we need to continue to pray, continue to pray for revival, continue to pray for the lost and, 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 and ask God to just please, please open the eyes of, of the blind in this culture, especially in Hollywood and in the media and just open their eyes so they can see. And, and, and so we just have to keep, keep, uh, persevering in prayer. And we also, as, as believers have to, as I always say, we have to stick to our convictions and continue to just constantly stay in the word of God because it is the sword of the spirit and it helps us to fight off the lies of the culture so that we don't get sucked into the lies and we don't start to believe the lies, which a lot of churches are starting to do. So anyway, those are my thoughts for today and I hope you enjoyed it and thank you. Next week, I have a very special guest on the show, which will be really fun. But thank you for watching and I'll see you next time on The Becca Cook Show.